Hi and welcome along to AFTV. We are live here on transfer deadline day. I've got Bav with me um, and uh, we're taking a look at the transfer activity that is going on and Arsenal have signed another player. Hey! <laughs> Some signings, man. <laughs> on loan. Loan. Loan FC. <laughs> loan FC. Bargain hunters. Um, bargain hunters. Uh, but listen, it's, it's good that we've uh, made another sign-in. Is Cedric Sarez. Um, actually, I did transfer daily this morning. And um, listen, from yesterday, I'd had an inkling and been told that more or less it's going to happen. But I didn't want to say in transfer daily that it's definitely happening today because I, I'm like, you know, I got burned by that earlier on in the week when I said, you know, oh, um, Pablo Mari today, later on, it's going to be announced. And then it didn't get announced. It did eventually get done a couple of days later, but I wanted to make sure. But it has happened now. Cedric has signed for Arsenal um, from Southampton. It's a loan deal um, that's going to keep him at Arsenal until the end of the season. At the end of the season, he'll be out of contract um, and Arsenal will have the chance to sign him on permanently. So basically, it's a bit of, a, bit of an audition for him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. if, he, if he does well from now till the end of the season... Uh, for Arsenal, then they can turn around and say, all right, listen, here, let's sit down and talk about a new deal. If he doesn't do well, then they can just say, well, all right, you know, you go and join someone else and we yeah. look for somebody else. So I think a decent enough deal for Arsenal. And Cedric, I like him. I mean, even before um, we were linked with him, which it was a bit out of the blue, the links, I've always sort of seen him as a player that I said, yeah, he's decent. He's, yeah. he's, he's a good right back. Was he um, once linked with United and Chelsea as well? He was linked with United and Chelsea. He's a Portuguese international thing. He's got about 130 he caps. He won the Euros. He's in a squad that won the Euros. He's a decent player. And Bav, I know that um, on your channel, mm -hmm. um, and you, what, tell him your channel again. Yeah, so my channel is uh, Basketball Ian. I've got a video coming out later. I'm, you know, I'm still finishing that yeah. right now. But it's going to be five reasons why he's perfect for Arsenal. I yeah. think perfect is a bit, of, a bit of an overstatement. I think he's more of a decent signing. He's nothing special. He's a loan mm. signing, of course. But one of the reasons why I said it's a good deal for Arsenal is because it's low risk. It's a loan. If things mm. don't work out, you can get rid of him, you know, sign a better player. But how many times can you get a Premier League proven player who's, you know, playing the Premier League for half his career, actually, and only £5 million? And, yeah. you, and he's a right back. He's a position yeah. where well, and, well, and he could be a left back as well. Yeah, I think they've probably paid about a million pounds to Southampton for for him, and then the rest the of package, it yeah. is really his wages that makes up, um, you know, the the, the, the fee. Um, so it's a it's a very, like you said, a very low risk, you know, deal for Arsenal. And as I said, if it works, brilliant, keep you on and stuff exactly. like that. If it doesn't work, you can move on. It's it's, it's great for both. And you already saw Cedric, and I mean, he he's he's overwhelmed. Exactly. You know what I mean? To be coming to Arsenal. Let me see if I can um, grab some of his quotes. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's obviously chuffed to bits to be um, at a big club like Arsenal. Um, and that only bodes well. I think he's going to want to make his stamp exactly. um, at Arsenal. Um, I think he said he could join us a few years ago. I think that's what he said in his Sorry? Interview. I think he said he could join Arsenal a few years ago. As in, he, was, he could have mm. joined us. Yeah. Well, he was asked about, um, you know, uh, on... Arsenal.com, they're asking him, you know, what have you made of Arteta so far? And these are his quotes. He said, um, it's good to watch. Um, he said, I've been watching for the last couple of weeks as well. Um, and then he went on to say, you can see that something has changed, definitely. There is a lot of work to do, but definitely already his ideas have started um, to appear in the game, and that is good. I'm sure Arsenal will be very successful. I see the team that wants to assume the game, a team that's comfortable um, to have the ball. And I see everyone looks like uh, they're working hard when they lose possession as well. Mm -hmm. There's a high press, and then it's all about controlling the opponent and trying to score as well. I think Arsenal's in a good way. Um, and as I said, he made 138 appearances um, for Southampton in a four-year spell. Exactly. Um, and uh, he's joined Arsenal um, on this loan deal, which could become permanent in the summer. So I think um, a good bit of business, um, bringing him in, bringing in um, Pablo Mari as well, who's going to play in the centre-back position. Again, another guy who's going to be hungry to do well. And uh, two loan signings. Two yeah. loan signings. And we all want big permanent signings. But do you know the interesting thing about this, and I was making the point this morning, Bav, 
in Transfer Daily. And we're going to get to people's comments as well. I can see loads of your comments coming through and keep them coming through. Um, we'd like to get your opinions on it. But have you noticed that this transfer window has almost been a bit relaxed? Yeah. It's like, normally fans... A couple of, if Wenger would have done a couple of loan signings, we'd be in meltdown. Oh, yeah, yeah. If Unai Emery last season, we would have been like, come on, give him some. But it's like, almost like the Arsenal fan base at the moment are quite relaxed mm. with the signings that have yeah, been exactly. made. And I think a lot of that is to do with Mikel Arteta. I think it's the fact that Arteta's come in, he's getting the best out of those players that are there. So some of the players at the start of the transfer window that I think every Arsenal player would have liked to have seen gone, mm -hmm. which is Xhaka and yeah. Mustafi. Stepped up. They've stepped up. It's Arteta. Arteta's come in and he's got the best out of Xhaka. And Xhaka now is all of a sudden looking like a player that we're like, hey, why would we want to yeah. get rid of him? He's, guys, he's playing well, he's looking solid. And even somebody like Mustafi, <sighs> even after decent. making that big mistake at um, Chelsea, you're looking at him and you're thinking... You know what? He's done yeah. all right still. And the Bournemouth game as well. He's the like Bournemouth game he's playing well, stuff, yeah. Like, and people are looking at it and they say, you know what? This guy's done all right, man. Why, why, why should we? Why should we get rid of him? Yeah, you know I mean, let's, let's see what he does for now. Yeah, I think. And that's Arteta, and yeah, that exactly. is why people are a bit relaxed with the signings. I think because they're looking at it and thinking, well, he's gone and got a couple of signings what we think will fit, mm -hmm. and we're cool with that. In general, well, we might, I don't know, we'll see the comments and yeah, see if you are cool with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're more or less cool with that until the summer. I think it's the summer where the pressure is going to really come on for big yeah. signings. But what, what do you think of that? Yeah, I think the window itself, yeah, as you said, is pretty relaxed. There, there are two signings that are pretty cheap as well. We were never going to sign the big names targets because why would, for example, Pomacano, why would he want to leave a team like RB Leipzig who are, you know, fighting for the title <coughs> mid season? <It> <coughs> Mm. Uh, and so I think two lower signings, they both address areas of weaknesses, right back and left back as well, because Cedric can play both positions. And then Mari, you get a position, a centre back, a left sided centre back, a left footed one. When's the last time we had a good left footed centre back? Mm. Or the, any, any left footed centre back? Probably Vermarlin, mm. from what I can remember. So I think it's been two decent signings. I'm not going to say they're the best in the world, they're going to rip the Premier League apart. But they're lowest signings. So if things don't work out, they're both loans, get rid of them. And mm. funny enough, actually, uh, Mari's taken apparently number 22. And if you remember, that's the same number as Dennis Suarez. So, uh, <laughs> I... Well, but, I, but remember the Dennis Suarez one? Suarez came in and then it was revealed afterwards that he wasn't even fit in the whole time he was here. That's the only slight worry on this Cedric, uh, Cedric one because he's out injured at the moment, isn't he? Free. It's a ligament injury, I think. That's what... A knee ligament injury, according to Raf Hassan. Mm. So... But... I think Arsenal would have done their due diligence. They wouldn't be signing him on loan. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Give Kim FC, man. Don't think it Kim Kalstrom. Broke it. But I think it's a different era now. <laughs> yeah, a different yeah. era now. Do you so. know the other interesting thing as well? Is like somebody like Cedric, right? He's looked after by um, Jorge Mendes, who. Jorge Mendes, yeah. Jorge Mendes, who's, yeah. who's in the past. He got Arsenal didn't even have to deal with a Mendes. Exactly. And now we're able to get a deal like this done because we are dealing with Mendes. He probably got a bit of a fee off of it as well. Yeah, don't, yeah. Get, yeah, don't get that wrong. Mm. But, you know, these guys look after some of the biggest players around. So it is good to, yeah, be, let's, let's to be dealing with them. Let's not forget, Mendes was a part of the deal that brought Nicolas Pepe to Arsenal. Yeah. He was the guy, you know, negotiated that yeah, 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 yeah. And so in, yeah. in the summer, I would not be surprised if some madness happened. For example, mm. last summer, towards the end, we were off for Coutinho. Like when they ask me, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I would not be surprised in the future, in the summer when they especially, we go big. But I'll mm. be doing it. All right, let's get some of uh, your comments. Let's see what you guys are having to say about it. Um, <coughs> uh, so let's get this one there. Flying, flying hat, he says, it's a, a good signing, good business as his contract is up in the summer and we can get him for free if he does well for us. Also, he knows the Premier League. I think that's important. That's a very key thing. That's important, isn't it? He knows the Premier League. I've said this before. I said, if you look at Liverpool, for example, the signings that really, you know, put them up there. Mane, Premier League proven. So is Van Dijk, Premier League proven. They didn't sign him from Celtic and RB Leipzig or Salzburg. They signed him from Premier League sides. And so with Cedric, the adaptation period will be much shorter because you're signing a player who knows the environment of the Premier League. It's not coming from a different league. The language is not going to be new to him either. So it's key for a player, if you're signing him in January in particular, for yeah. him to hit the ground running. So. Yeah, exactly, because there's only going to be a few months until the, really, in effect, exactly. till the end of the season. And where um, Cedric might really be an important player is in the Europa League as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm thinking of that, you know what I mean? He's a very experienced player, international player. 
that's where a player like him might be good rather than having like somebody like a Maitland-Niles dropping into mm -hmm. that position. What happens to him now, yeah, Maitland-Niles? So because, my, you know, yeah. Bellerin's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd assume Bellerin's number one for that position. What happens to Maitland-Niles? So I, I've said first, I think Maitland-Niles has the capabilities to play in midfield. Not a first teamer for Arsenal, he may not be good enough. But I think he has that ball carrying ability that none of our current midfielders have. Like Xhaka can't carry the ball, neither can Serrera. Ceballos can, but Arteta's not playing him. I think Maitland Niles will give us pace. And let's not forget. I don't know, man. I worry for Maitland Niles a bit you... because uh, you think about it, right? Look at all the players he's going to have to get past now. You've you got Xhaka's. You mm -hmm. can see already he's set in stone there and Torreira. Yeah. Those two are set in stone as starters, yeah? Then just in front of them, you've got Guendouzi. had a great game the other day against Bournemouth. You've got Sobias, yeah. who's desperate and desperate to play well because he wants to get into the Euros. And he's staying now, isn't Right, he? and he's staying. Well, at least we will yeah, find yeah. out by 11 o'clock <laughs> tonight if he's staying. Yeah. Right, and then, of course, you know what I mean, you've got Mesut Ozil. So, I, 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 yes, I hear what you say, but I think if he is going to get in the team, it's going to be out wide. Ooh. It's going to be out wide. He's going know. to be have to be out on the flanks, but and then he, even then, look at the Nelson, competition: Martinelli, Pepe. Nelson, Saka. You've got to fear a bit for Maitland Niles. I don't know, man. But I think you know what? He can play in a midfield three, can, and it also gives us options. So in mm. many ways, by signing Cedric, we're indirectly strengthening our midfield because now you've got an option there. And Maitland Niles, you can play in different areas. He's a utility player as well. Mm. He's not a bad player. Um, I actually compare him in many ways to Oxley Chamberlain. Mm. Because he was another player who was out wide, we never, yeah. never thought could be a midfielder, and now he's at Liverpool, he's starting week in, week out for them. Yeah. All right, let's uh, get a couple, um, some more of your comments. Um, Stephen Carr says, signing um, Cedric is a super buy for, um, from Arsenal, very low risk, can fill it as backup at right back and left back, um, and uh, backup for CDM as well. Yeah. Um, he's got defensive experience. That's true. Uh, um, versatile player. Man. Yeah. So very versatile player. So my man. Oh, let, let's see. Uh, oh. Darren, Dar um, Damien Omen, not too happy with the transfers by the sound of it. He says the highest ticket prices in the world. Yeah. And this is our return. Yeah. Kiss petite move. Yeah. You can understand what you're saying there. You know what I mean? We, you know, because it is all loans, isn't it? Yeah. And you look at United as well. They've gone out. And they spent. They've big. gone out. And they, yeah, United have Tottenham gone out and bought well Fernandez. Tottenham have bought. They could get man like Giroud. Mm, don't know about that. But they bought this. Uh, Bergwijn. Berg Bergwijn Berg as well. You, you see, the problem with Arsenal at the moment right, is under financial fear play. Yeah. We're not in it's the Champions. It's only us, though, isn't it? It's always yeah, only us. Yeah, but we're not in the Champions League. Yeah, exactly, man. And you know, the owner doesn't pump his own money, and we know that, but. Yeah. I hear what that guy's saying. Yeah. Loan deals, you know. Yeah, we're there's a couple of other signings out there that possibly we could have done if we would. Um, there, there's that guy Guimaraes who's joining Leon. Yeah. Who's uh, again another right back. No, Guimaraes is a midfielder. So, sorry, a midfielder, yeah, defensive yeah. midfielder, um, that we were heavily linked with. He's like we were the favourites to sign, and Leon have come in and bought him. They paid 16 million pounds for him. Now we wanted him again on loan. Yeah. And obviously. When you want players on loans, other teams are coming in and will go, hey, yeah. I'll wiki you the cash. What are you going to do? You're going to take it, a loan deal or are you yeah, going to give that, the cash out? The same thing happened with Matt Vienko. He's a yeah. first teamer for their team. Why, is he gonna, why are they going to let go of a player who's also in his, like, he's a young player as well, on mm. a loan to Arsenal? What, what did they get from that? Yeah. So it, it makes sense, man, to, to, for other clubs. Some more? Yeah, I think Nicholas G. Do you want to go with one? Uh, Nicholas G says, I think they're signing... These signings are poor, but then again, we have nothing to play for this season, so I'd rather we save up our money to maximise the value we can get for it in the summer. Well, I wouldn't say we've got nothing to play for. We've still got a very slim, 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 slimmer than Brennan over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> of getting into the, the fourth spot. The, the way certain teams have been messing it up, you never know, right? So we've got a slim chance of that. But um, we're also still in the FA Cup. We're also still in the Europa League, and that's another way into the Champions League as well. So there's still a bit to play for. I wouldn't say we've got nothing to play for. I mean, yeah, I um, but they're obviously keeping their powder dry um, mm. a lot to, um, you know, a lot till the end of the season. Mm. 
You want to go with that one? Zetom. Maitland Niles can challenge when doing for a spot in the midfield rotation. He's extremely calm with the ball, uh, which is super useful in central midfield, and he can run with the ball as well. And that's what I'm saying. He has the ability, the natural ability, to play in midfield. The passing range, the running of the ball, the gym. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm not just saying, let's just not, let's give him a chance at least. Not, he's not first team. But how's he going to get that chance? Look how many people Europe, are going to no, be in front of him. Rotation. He, he did say rotation there as well. Rotation. Mm. Europa League, FA Cup. Give him a game. If it doesn't work out, it don't work out. Mm. But let's not forget, some of Mate now's best performances for Arsenal came midfield. He won man of the mm. match at Old Trafford. If you remember that game, I guess Southampton when Welbeck did a celebration and scored. So mm. he, I think he can play there, man. I trust no, him. No, he can play there. I'm just saying how many people are ahead of him. Yeah. You know, what chances is he going to get to play there? That's yeah. the problem. Would you, If he doesn't work out, would you move him on in the summer? It could be a case that he could get moved on in the summer if he because he's going to want to play. Mate Lenars now is he 22, 23? Yeah. He's going to want to play football, isn't he? It, it'd be a shame because you know he's come through the ranks and you always want to see players that come through the ranks succeed. But definitely, he's got his work cut out in front of him now. You exactly. Know? Um, it's why I, all along I've always been saying that Mate Lenars needs to try and make that right back position his own because mm -hmm. you know he's in the first team. Yeah. Now you see Cedric coming in. This He's, you know, lots of competition for him now, you know, yeah. so... And I made a point actually yesterday in my video, and I said, Cedric coming in actually gives Bellerin more competition. And I think yeah. the best Hector Bellerin we saw at Arsenal was when he had Debussy behind him. Yeah. So if he, if he wasn't playing good, he wouldn't get dropped. Yeah. So maybe he can push Hector Bellerin as well. Yeah. So uh, we've got comments from Fahim Hussain. Both signings are loan deals um, and, made our, and made our strength in our defence. If they don't work out, we can send them back. Uh, and so we don't really make a loss. Do, right. What do you make of Mari? Do you think he's going to... Mari, listen, if you're looking at Mari's um, pedigree, um, again, he was at Manchester City for three seasons. All right, we know he didn't play for Manchester City, Lord. but he knows the environment, he knows the Premier League. Um, he was out on loan mm -hmm. three times in, in that, which uh, all reports he did pretty good on the, all of his loan moves. Mm -hmm. um, then he got the move to... Flamengo, and done brilliantly over there. They won Copa Libertadores, Libertadores, <laughs> right, that's such a hard word to pronounce. Um, they won the league over there. They played in a, in a Super Cup final where they only lost 1-0 to, in extra time to, exactly. to Liverpool. Um, he is described as the best defender in Brazilian football. He's Spanish. And he went over to Brazil and took up that challenge, which you've got to admire that as well. Mm -hmm. That means he's not scared to go and take a challenge up. Um, he's going to be hungry. He's, he wants to get in the Spain he, squad. He wants to get in the Spain squad. He's 26. He's in the prime. Exactly. Once again, that's put in some good performances at a high-profile club like Arsenal. He could find himself pretty easily into that Spanish squad. Yeah. And also, you know, he should settle in pretty easily. You know, I mean, there's a lot of Spaniards at the club. Of course, Mikel Arteta, the manager, exactly. is Spanish, speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. You've got Hector Biller in there. You know, you've got... Sabayos. Sabayos there as well. You've got other... Even Abameyang can speak Spanish. Span right, yeah, Abameyang. You've got other... Um, you've got Brazilians there as well. Exactly. Like Martinelli and Edu. And he's just come from Brazil. So yeah, exactly. Ish, it's good. Listen... It's settling in in games. So it would yeah. be very interesting to see if he plays in the game against Bournemouth, um, Burnley. Comment below. Because Burnley, we all know, is, we know what Burnley play like. You know what yeah. I mean? Very physical. So that if he does play in that game, immediately he will see... Welcome to the Premier League. You're not, not going to have a Burnley in Brazil. I don't, know, I don't, I don't think that's, a sort of, that's not Brazilian style of football, Burnley. So it's how he's going to settle into that. But he seems like... Uh -huh. He seems like a good signing. Um, let's see what Lee Hammonds will say here. He said, uh, we are Arsenal FC. Are we really supposed to be excited about signing a six foot three defender who's slow as hell and a Southampton reject? This is why we're going to lose a Bamiang and Lacazette. Dead players around them. Oh. Can I quickly respond to that slow yeah. comment? So people say Murray's slow. <coughs> They've all seen his pace on FIFA and he's slow and whatever. Right? But let me get it straight. Maguire's slow. Right? So is Lewis Dunk. He would have taken a dunk at Arsenal. Mm. So why is it that we're signing a player who's also slow, not from the Premier League? Why, why does that matter then? Because if we would sign Dunk, we would be gassed. And look how many times over the years we said we want a big, yeah. imposing centre-back. He's six foot... I don't think he's six foot three. I think he's six foot two, isn't he? No, or, six foot... Actually, six, six foot three or four, actually. I've six foot three or four. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yes, he's he is actually. Sorry, you know? yes. So he's a big guy. We've always wanted that and in also, our defence. Yeah, and you look into the profile of player that he is, He's a more relaxed centre-back. He's not mm. like Mustafi Louis. He's not aggressive. So, in, in many ways, he's like Van Dijk. 
because mm. Van Dijk is the one who sits back and you've got Gomez who attacks. Now, yeah. I've seen a few comments here. By the way, I like this oh, comment here before we get you. So, uh, Ram, Ramo650, he said, Bollywood Bath is so confident of the new signings that he's already prepared to wear a champion's hoodie. Listen, <laughs> you know what I mean? 2021, we're coming for you. <laughs> we are coming for you. <laughs> champion. You know I mean? Right, so I've seen a few comments. I've got one here from Illy Pal. Stop ignoring Ziyech. I've seen a few comments saying we should have signed Ziyech. Yeah, what and, you and, and there was a lot of rumours that we were offered Ziyech um, last summer. Would you, do um, you think he can replace Ozil? Oh, I don't know if he's the same mould as Ozil. He is a very good player. He's a very good player. But I'm not sure if he's the, if, if he's the same mould. Um, mm -hmm. um, Super chat. But yeah, yeah he's... Mm. I like Zayat. He'd be a good signing. He would, he would be, be and signing. he scores goals, and we don't score enough goals from midfield. Yeah, yeah, right about that. Um, signature here with a super chat. He says most defenders um, expect VVD. Van Virgil Vindra. Van Dijk, of it, course. It's slow. It, um, it's slow as well. I'm not, I'm, Listen, how many Virgil centre Van Dijk is not slow. No, no, he's, I think he's saying not slow, except Van Dijk. Is oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. I think you, you can't get. There's not Van Dijks in the market right now. Who, who can you get yeah. in the market that's on well, the that's it. Everybody's looking for the next in Van Dijk, it? So, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mark T says, we as a football club need to allow Arteta to get his players that he wants himself. Look at Liverpool. Klopp had full licence when he came in to Liverpool and look where they are now. And if you look at... One of the things I have to admire about Liverpool, right, is not every one of their players were like mega names, were they? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When, well, he bought him, when he bought him Mane... Yeah. Mane was doing well, but he wasn't like Salah the world well. class player. And Salah was doing brilliant at Roma, but he wasn't world class. He's made them world class. He, yeah. He's, he's brought in players sometimes, like you said, Laka Wanalden from Newcastle, mm -hmm. that everybody was like, yeah, it's all right. Even when he said Laka And look what he, he, I think now one of the best midfielders in, in the Premier yeah. League. You look at Liverpool, what they did, they, they obviously invested in the squad, but not massively. Like Firmino was 30 mil, Salah was 30 mil. <coughs> and then. Yeah. They needed a two signings just to, or three signings just to consolidate it. Van Dijk, 75, Fabinho, 50, 74, Addison, mm. and there you go. You're now but also what I like about what Liverpool have done, um, they have also, when Liverpool have done it, they have also like bought what they've needed in the right areas. Exactly. I've just felt that Arsenal over the years has just been panic buying all the time, last minute, no planning, at least there's a bit of thought into it. We know we needed a centre-back. Yeah. So we've got a centre-back. We knew we needed a wide player. Um, at the back, he's gone and done that. He's gone and brought the players exactly. in the right positions. How many times over the years have I been doing transfer daily, screaming at the screen, saying that why Signs are we not signs on players? <laughs> but why are we not buying a centre back? Yeah. Why are we not buying a defensive midfielder when we've desperately needed it? You know. Mm. Um, we've got one here from uh, Kushik Prasad. Prasad, yeah. Um, super chat. Thank you very much for that. He says, "Can you talk about Giroud going to Spurs?" I, I made an argument the other day, you know, on Twitter, and I said... How are they going to sing? Sorry to cut you back. I know. How are Tottenham fans going to sing? La, 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 Giroud. They'll feel funny singing that, well, uh, surely. Look, they've got Mourinho, who's gone from club to club to club. Yeah. And now they've got Giroud, who's gone to club to club to club. And, like, so I made a, I made a debate on Twitter the other day. I didn't, it's not my actual opinion, but the debate was, um, is Giroud a bigger snake than Van Persie? Because of he's, now, he's not being at Spurs, if he goes, obviously... Chelsea as well, as to forget, and remember the European League final, celebrating, laughing at Arsenal. <coughs> what would you say? Yeah, it's a, you know what? You are looking at it from two angles. From a fan's angle, mm -hmm. any player that played for Arsenal that goes to Tottenham, you look at it and you say, what the hell? You can no longer be a greater Arsenal, right? Go to Chelsea is bad enough, but you can forgive the Chelsea Tottenham, thing. Tottenham, no. Right? You go to Tottenham, you're like, Phew. but then you got to look at it from Giroud's point of view. Mm. He wants to play. He wants to well. get into. He's, he's, he wants to stay in London. He wants to get into the Euros, mm -hmm. right? He's a, in the French national team. He's not. He's hardly played at all for Chelsea, right? Yeah. Harry Kane's out injured. He knows that if he goes to Tottenham, it'll probably be a loan deal mm -hmm. from now till the, and he'll get a lot of game time, and that could get him into the Euros. So. I can understand sort of where he's coming from, but the thing is about it, I think players also need to think about their legacy. I still think Giroud, even though he went to Chelsea, I still think Giroud, in a couple of years' time, if he retires, could come back to Arsenal and the fans would welcome him back. 
Mm, they would say, oh, he yeah, went to Chelsea, but I think they'd forgive yeah, him. Yeah, for me, I would But if you go to Tottenham... Oh, no, no. Don't come back. You are erased <laughs> from the history. Back. And it'd be a shame. I used to like Giroud. Yeah, but look, see, he cost us his assist record, so I've got a personal agenda against him now, ain't it? Is that what I mean? Like, he could have, he could have won a Premier League title for his uh, I don't know, man. It's a hard one because you also got to look at it from a footballer's point but of view. But what about his legacy? What about Chelsea? They're, they're strengthening a rival now. Yeah. Why? Why are they let go of? Because well, obviously you know they've I mean? seen Giroud. They don't rate Giroud no more. Yeah, but um, cool. I get that. But you're giving. He's still a decent yeah. player. You're giving it him a Tottenham. How are you gonna? And this top four rivals. Uh, all these players. You know the one thing is these players are leaving Arsenal and ending up at. Mind you, it's our leftovers, isn't it? Yeah, but go on, <clears> man. You can't be. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm not gonna go to it. Uh, uh, this one that. here. Um, yeah, you give me that one because it's to pronounce the name, isn't it? You can okay. pronounce that. Contro that's super chat. Shukola. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> he I'm said, sorry for that. Yeah, he said. Are we just going to loan players? Free in our team now. He said we call Arsenal loan FC. Arsenal, Arsenal, loan, Arsenal loan Arsenal FC. FC. Oh my I God. I think we've got another super chat. I yeah. think there's yeah, one yeah. here. Um, Mr. A, um, thanks for the super chat. He says, pardon my ignorance. Is Cedric more like Trent or Pereira? Uh, Would be great if he was like Trent. Adding another creative outlet to our side. I mean, right. he let, let, let's not, not go that far. He's not true. He's more of a, he's more of <laughs> but, a solid player, isn't he? Like, yeah. He's a solid defender. He's a good player. Yeah, he's a good, he's player. good player. He's got a decent cross on him and as well. And free kicks as well. He can take free kicks. Free kicks as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Remember the one at United when McTominay yeah. was on the behind the wall? Yeah, he's that. decent. Um, another super chat. Another super chat here. Um, Mark T says, Giroud will now be forced to remain um, at the club for the remainder of the season with Frank Lampard and willing to let him um, go unless he can land a replacement. Live news, so yeah. he's given us a bit, a bit of an update why, why, on that. Why, why I, would Chelsea I, let him go? I don't know. I just think Giroud, go somewhere else, man. Don't ruin. He your, wants to go into Milan to be fair to him. You're ruining your legacy if you if you go. What's going on into Milan? They're trying to sign all these. Into Milan League. signing all of the ex Premier League players. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> uh, okay, what else was it? Here you go. We we got one here. Ab. Tahi Tishad, yeah. should we try and go uh, go off the Koulibaly in the summer? Napoli is in a mess right now. Can we get These him? are the sort of players, if Arsenal are serious... Different knock FC, start knocking. You know if I mean? Arsenal are serious about challenging again for the Premier League over the next couple of seasons, I'm sorry, these are the sort of players they have to start looking at. Koulibaly's, Upamancano, these local, isn't top it? defenders. In the summer... I know they've got a bit of a pass, um, this transfer window, as I said, because of the excellent job that Mikel Arteta has done by sort of uniting the team and the fan base. But come the summer, the fans are going to be looking, and I'm sure Mikel Arteta himself is going to be looking to strengthen properly. Mm -hmm. There'll be players going, yeah. and he's going to want to make a big signing in defence. Or I, I think we need a big signing in defence. Yeah. Look what Van Dyke did. The yeah. two signings Liverpool did that changed everything for them. They needed a keeper. They went and got Alisson, top keeper, spent a lot of money on him. They needed Ten a back. defender. They went and got Virgil Van Dyke. The rest Thanks, is man. history. And look how good they are now, man. You we need mean? to do the same. Our defence, I think, I mean, you're going to fall out now, that there's three big positions that we need to sort oh, out in the, in the summer. There you go. Um, I know what's coming. We need a we need a centre back. We need a world class, or if not world class, a player that can emerge to become a world class okay. centre back. Yeah. I get another holding midfielder. I'm happy with Torreira, Jacker at the moment. I'm happy with as well. Mm -hmm. But I think another player in there, a uh, Decore or somebody like that. Somebody who gets around the pitch, yeah. but is also very got a physical presence about him and some leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. And it's time to replace Ozil for me. Um, I would bring in a top midfielder who can do the things that Ozil does with his passing and assists and that, but also scores goals. Our midfield does not score enough goals. And yeah, no. In terms it'd be time of Ozil, for no, Ozil for me. Ozil, and I bring in. A, a, I'd spend a lot of money on a good replacement for Ozil. Yeah, I mean, do you know what? Yeah, <coughs> and, and funny enough, I actually agree with you. I think. I love Ozil, you know I love Ozil, but mm. you got sometimes you got to let go in it. Like he's not, it's not cut mm. for him anymore. But yeah, he got super check there. Uh, Dano Junior, uh, yes, yours actually. You can read that. Actually. Dano Junior, what's his name? Hey, hey Robbie, hey, I've been Robbie. having um, a real hard time in flight school. I should have done um, three years ago, and I still haven't achieved anything. It's a bit off topic, 
but look up to you. Um, so you want some advice? Oh, fly! Get a private jet out, you know. Yeah. Oh, um, listen. The, the only advice is that I give in these sort of things is never give up. Never, never give up. What was what? Whatever happened yesterday was yesterday. Never give up. You know what? Looking at somebody like um, Kobe Bryant, who passed away the other day. Um, one of the things that they cite with Kobe Bryant for the reason why he became the best, right, is that he never, ever gave up. When any time he had a setback, yeah. he was just like, yeah, this setback is for a reason. And then he used that setback to then improve again. And I think oh all of the winners, if you look at Cristiano Ronaldo, same thing. Never That guy's 34, still looks as fit as when he was 24. 24 because he, he, he still gives it his all. He never, he, he, he's got the talent, but he had hard work with it. It's the same with all the top players yeah. around at the moment. So never give up, especially on your passion. Keep working hard and I'm sure you'll get there. Um, there's another super chat here. This one's from Mohammed um, Bahani. Bayani. Bayani, yeah. yeah. Um, he says, uh, people keep forgetting that we still have William, is it Saliba or Saliba? S Saliba, Saliba, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> you know, I'm not the best pronunciation either. Saliba we go. To yeah. arrive in the summer, how do you guys think we will? he will adapt to the Premier League? I know you've been watching um, I, Saliba very closely. Yeah, you were eulogising him about him yesterday in the office. Hey, Mbappe of centre backs, as they say. Look, listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Put <laughs> he always gets music. carried away, you know. Yeah, that's all. That's what I'm about, isn't it? The Mbappe uh, of centre backs. That's what they call him. That's what they call him. They call Why is him that the, then? So what have you seen? They call him the Mbappe of You've been watching him a lot. You said recently. Yeah. Well, what have you seen? Funny enough, a lot of people on Twitter actually watch him. Whenever a game's on and he's playing for them, he obviously was injured for a while. He, I think he made his first start a few days ago actually, and he looks again. He looks so good. He looks so composed. He's aggressive, he wins those balls, good tackles, and most importantly, he's very good in the ball. And one thing I've noticed with Arsenal so far this season under Arteta is he wants those centre-backs to be very comfortable in the ball. And Socrates is not that. He's, he's basic mm. on the ball. He can play a few passes, but we need centre-backs that can drive at that ball when needed to. We can, you know, play that long pass. And so I think Saliba for that is perfect. 18 years old, of course, so it's, it's a bit too much pressure to go and say you're the main centre-back for Arsenal, mm. but he's showing a lot of quality. What happens to Socrates at the end of the season? Because I'm sure... I think he's gone. I'm sure he's in his last year. I don't know if he's in his last year. Sure, let me see. But, um, um, well, do another comment. I'm going to look at that because it's very interesting. Let's find another comment. To see... Uh, Okay, someone said Aubameyang hasn't signed a contract yet. Be prepared for Ramsey situation part two. Why Arsenal didn't cash in? Uh, Arsenal was doing the same mistake. Any any who has two years left in his contract, sell him. Same old Arsenal. Um, That's a big comment. Well, to comment on that was I'm just looking through. Yeah, I don't know about Aubameyang. I think he's one of those where uh, I don't I don't want to sell him, but you can't sell Aubameyang, can you? You can't sell Aubameyang. Um, but if he can't, if he if he don't want to sign a contract, you got. Oh, his contract. Yeah, you know what? I'm just sorry. Just going back on the Socrates, Socrates. thing. His contract expires in the summer. So. Ooh, no one's mentioned that as well. Yeah, I'm I'll I'll very much. He's 31 now. Probably they'll probably be looking to move him on. Well, not move him on. I, I don't think they'll resign him. Maybe and uh, maybe a a year extension. Who knows? Um, the 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 Abamyang one for me is quite simple. If he wants to say we sign him on a new deal. I'd be looking to give him a contract extension of another two years. Keep him at the club. He's as fit as a fiddle. I don't care if he's 30. The guy's still as fit as a fiddle. It's a bit like what we were just saying about like your and Ronaldo's and people like that. And he's a natural goal scorer. He come in his first season, first season, won the golden boot. His goal scoring record is unbelievable. He'd be so difficult to replace. Why would you want to sell him? However, if he doesn't want to sign a new deal, then we do need to start thinking yeah. about moving him on because, like that guy said, then we are then starting to get into that same sort of situation that we've had down the years yeah. with Ramses and people like that. It happened, but, with, it happened with Ozil as well, let's not forget. We yeah. wanted him to stay so badly, yeah. we offered him the contract. But I, I personally think now there's no point in selling him today. No, Who no, no. Who would replace him with? No, no, you dare. Yeah, so, <laughs> th so that means he's going to have 12 months left. And he, yeah. it will have to be at the end of the season, if he doesn't want to sign a new deal, you have to sell him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm hoping that during the next few weeks and something, they sit down with him and try and negotiate a new deal with him because he's a quality player. Top, top player. Got two super chats, actually. Uh, two super chats here. I'll do the first one. Flynn says, uh, 
Would Kai Havertz be a good replacement for Ozil? I think yes. Oh, he'd be class, but... He would, he would. He won't be cheap, bro. Like He won't be cheap, but this is what I'm saying. You get loan thing now. Yeah. Ask Loan FC now. Loan but FC. when the summer comes, we got to go big, man. Money's got to be spent. Money has to be spent in the summer. the doors, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, and if you want to replace a player like Ozil, you got to be looking at somebody like a Kai Havertz. What about Havertz. a Madison? Madison, yeah. You know what? It's really interesting, right? You know, I've been doing this documentary. Um, and I've been going to a lot of different um, football clubs um, over the past few weeks. And last week I was up in Leicester, um, just before mm. they played West Ham. Yeah. And I was chatting to some Leicester fans. And, it's, you know, it's always really interesting to talk to fans of the club yeah. about their players. I was asking them about Madison. There's a few of them saying to me, you know, he's a bit of a show pony. They're like, he's a good player. But they go, they just notice of him recently, since everybody started talking about him, he's trying to do everything. He's trying to score every goal. He's trying to make every Hollywood pass. And they're like, some of them were saying, you know, if he went, take the money and let him go. I was like, yeah. Make him the, other one, the other one that they were sort of, I was quite surprised about, and this was quite a few of them saying, was Chilwell. They're like, Chilwell's got no in product. So they're just going like, He's good at getting forward, but he's not a good defender. I've never rated Chilwell. That was really interesting to hear because I've always thought Chilwell are rating, but they were like, yeah, great at going forward. End product's not good enough. Defensively poor. So make that what you wish. We don't don't see the game. I'd have Madison. I'd have Madison. I I, I think that I have arts, though. He's top top. I like him, man. And he's young as well. He's he's at 20, 21. Yeah. Um, So Mark T says, give your top five players this season. Each by ranks. This season. Pool. Has been a bit hard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Top five players. Um, we Arsenal players. I'm presuming he's talking about. Yeah, of course. Of right? course. So he's got to be a Bamian. Bamian. Because he's still, despite even when Emery was there and we were playing terribly, Leno. he's still banging in the goals. Leno. Leno has to be there. Leno's been superb this season, even in the, when we've been having a poor season. I'm trying to think of the rest. Who else has been good? Like Martinelli. Oh, uh, Martin, Martinelli has been been superb. Saka. Oh, Bakayo. Has been absolutely superb as well. Um, I think this season has had a, um, a great season. That's four. The fifth player. Final one. See, it's hard, isn't it? Laka's had a bit of up and down. No, I wouldn't say Laka. You know, he's not been scoring. Not Pepe either. Pepe's still trying to, you know, assimilate into the into the team. Left backs are the same, right backs. Um, Torreira wasn't being played in his right now position. He's, he's now he's we're seeing the real yeah. Torreira. Ozil's been too inconsistent as usual. Xhaka the same. Xhaka had the horrific start. He, it's recently, he's, he's picked up and he's been good. Mm. Socrates started off well, then dropped off. David, David Luiz has been inconsistent. I don't know. No. <laughs> I'll give me your four. Go Who's below. that fifth one? Um, Go below. Martin is the backup goalkeeper. I think when he's coming, he's done brilliantly. Come on, Mar- <laughs> come on, Martinez. <laughs> backup goalkeeper. He's done excellent when he's coming. It just tells you all the story, man. That tells, that tells the whole story, there, there man. Martinez has played on the season. Oh, what about Gwen oh, Doozy? Gwen there you go. Gwen Doozy, yeah, that's actually, yeah, Gwen Doozy. Yeah. He had a little, he's had a little dip, but <laughs> yeah, on the whole, he's been, yeah, sorry, Gwen Doozy, apologise. Yeah, what's Gwen Doozy? Apologies, Gwen Doozy. There's a lot of people pointing out to yeah. us. Cammy Cam said Grealish. I like Grealish. Right. Grealish is a ball. I like Grealish, man. I think Grealish. Ta- I Grealish. Chambers as well, forgot about Chambers. Callum Chambers was put, yeah, sorry, yeah, thanks for us reminding of that. Callum Chambers, because he's out, we forgot him. Yeah. Jack Grealish, I'd have an Arsenal. Awesome. Look at him, we've got this, just go, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Uh, yeah, Jack Grealish. I'd have him. Uh, of course I'd have I him. I like he's, him, man. Scores uh, goals as well. And he's versatile, like, play left <clears> wing, yeah. play midfield, central. And as well, well, he's one of those guys who picks the ball up and runs at teams. Yeah. And people don't like that, and I, I like him. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think he'd be a good signing. We already done this one? No, he said, there's nothing said. I didn't say anything. No, he just. Oh, Stefan Bramble, super chat. Didn't say anything, but big up Stefan Bramble. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, sides here. Let's sides get Lingard. Here. Says uh, no. Dan there. So, yeah, you're right, Dan. Yeah. There you go, uh, Martinez. <laughs> so Highbury has donated, and he said Martinez's kicking is better than Leno's. That's the bait. Come on. I like, don't know, man, I, I, think, I think I agree, Highbury. What? Yeah, I He's... think I think I agree with Highbury. I no. do. Yep, I do. I think I agree with Ivory. Nah. His kicking is better than Leno's. That's the one. Leno's weaknesses, right, are his kicking needs to be better, right? And he still sometimes is a bit too casual playing the ball out from the back, a bit too slow. I've seen a few times Arteta 
Okay. Go into me. Hurry up. Move. You know what I mean? Like when you see, you know. But apart from that, he's been brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Listen, everyone's gonna have. You know, you can't be a perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. What's that one there about? Let me see this one. No. Um. Okay. Martinelli's the next Danny Ings. Well, listen, Danny Ings. I mean, Danny Ings has been banging in the goals, bro. You know what I mean? He's been banging in the goals. Um, Robin um, Oscarison uh, says, Greenish or Madison? Mm, it's a good debate. I've, Greenish. I've, I've always stuck with Greenish. I've Greenish always, for me. I've, I've been back in Greenish until... I like, Green, I, I like both of them, but I don't know, man. I, Greenish is excite, an exciting player, Reminds man. Reminds me of uh, Jack Wilshere when he was younger. Yeah. You know, Super Jack chance back bringing yeah. him to the Emirates. Uh, uh, Nasir says, in, I think in terms of a holding midfielder, we should bring back Rambo. He was never... You yeah. know, Rambo was a box to box midfield. He, he, was, was, a he, was, never a, he, he was never a holding midfielder. He never knew his best position. However, this again, and now this is when I'm talking about this guy here, um, okay. Arsenal TV. He got his spot on. These are the sort of signings I'm talking about in, in the summer. He says William uh, Wilfred Indeedy or James Madison in the summer. Indeedy would be perfect for Arsenal. Perfect. You got Ndidi, you got Torreira, you got Xhaka. Problem solved in yeah. that defensive midfield. I agree, midfield. With Wait, you say huh? no, innit? No, I'm saying yeah. Oh, you saying yeah? yeah, yeah. Why are you saying no, Ndidi? Okay, I'll go, I'll go. Let, let me give my argument to the side. I don't saying he's a bad player. He's a fantastic player. But we don't play midfield threes. And if we are to play a midfield three, you can't have Torreira and Ndidi in the same midfield. No, but you Our could, you... ball winner for me is is Torreira, and yeah, he wins the ball enough. You've got Right, and you also have the alternative of indeed you have two. No, no, okay, then right. So okay, you know, okay. injuries can happen, form can dip. If you're gonna challenge for the league, right? These are the sort of players you need. Do you know what? There's a comment here that I agree with actually. Over Ndidi, Nevers. I, I think that's what we need more of. A, a player like a Jacker, but he's a ball progressor. Ruben Nevers. Um, well, so you're unsure of Nevers, but you want Ndidi. No, I like ne really? I like Nevers, but Nevers. No, I'd rather Ndidi. Nah, I'd rather man. Ndidi. Look, obviously he's not I'd the star Ndidi, name, man. I hear that, but I just... Uh, Ndidi's not a star name, but I like no, Ndidi. Exactly, but I just I like think that we've Ndidi. got... Top, I think Torreira's our DM, top man. Player. I just think Torreira's the one for us. Um, Elstone Films HQ says, Leno needs to purchase some new gloves so that he can catch the ball better. That's his weakness, yeah. He's been flapping a few times this season. I blame the gloves, and he said in a Mark Goldbridge voice, <laughs> I blame the gloves! <laughs> no, that, that, that is a weakness for me. The, the crossing, man, the amount of corners are going, you can't catch shit. Like, honestly, it's, that's his weakness for me. Uh, what Sell Xhaka and buy Ndidi, that guy said. Nah, that don't work, though, does it? Because you're going to have two balls. Um, if Xhaka keeps playing like how he's been playing... Thomas Partey is another one. I, I've, I've loved what I've seen recently from Xhaka. Uh, Tielemans. Shut up. Nah, nah. What, you don't really tell him? It's all right. He's a good player. It's all right. He, nah, he ain't all right. He, he's it's all right. He's not a Grealish. I'd rather have Grealish than Tielemans. Oh, yeah, of course. But Decore, you mentioned him already. I like Decore. I like Decore. I think um, Decore, again, is another... What I like about Decore is he gets around the pitch. And I think you need players like that who can get up and down and all around the pitch. I like him. There's one here. I think it's a Decore or Neves. Nah, it's gone now. Just a guy a gay. <laughs> Do you remember him? He's yeah. a decent player as well. He's a good player, but, but he's, we... um, he, we're never going to get him. He's, he's over in um, PSG and he's doing very well. The Corey and Didi. Yeah. Who, would you, yeah, who would you rather have? The Corey or Ndidi? Who would you rather mm. have? It? Arsenal. Ndidi. 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 Um, look at this one here. There's uh, Oliver Keaton. He says, AFTV. I bet he's a Liverpool fan by the sounds of it. He said, would you rather Arsenal get top four and Liverpool do the Invincibles or Arsenal not get the top four and Liverpool fail to get the Invincibles. The Invincible thing, of course, is going the whole season unbeaten. Uh, I think I'd rather get top four, man. Nah. Nah. Top four, nah. man. Top four. We not... need to, listen, we need to get in that top four. Invincible thing is nice. We can say we're invincible as well. They matched it. We're invincible, you're invincible. No, but we can't. But we're in the top four. We're back nah. in the Champions League. We can start getting players in. We can... But nah. he didn't specify... If we get in Champions League, we could win the Europa League then. No, top four, you're in the Champions League. No, I, I hear that. But what if we don't get top four and win the Europa League? Yeah. And Liverpool well, then I'll it. take that. But, if exactly. that was yeah, all, but yeah. he's just giving two options, all isn't right. he? All right. um, Mr. A says, thoughts on us signing Wijnaldum. Um, 18 months left on his deal. Solid, creative and a ball winner. Yeah, um, he's a winner too. Would be immense in our midfield. And I have seen Wijnaldum when he was asked, saying that he's not sure yet what's happening. Oh. So... 
I'd I, have him. I, I would take him. I don't think we'll get him. Very good player. Um, we're going to just do a few more now. Oh, this is a good one now. Reginald Ensoa says, Adama Traore or Memphis would be great. Now, Memphis, Ooh. I don't think we need Memphis. We've got enough in the striker department. Come on, But Adama Traore, oh, I oh, would oh, have hey. in a heartbeat. I remember having an argument with Flex from United stand, where he was saying to me, oh, yeah, Rob, he's got no end product. And I said, yo, you know what? You're just saying what everybody else always says about this guy. He does. He never used to. He does have end product. When I was at the Wolves the other day, their fans were eulogising about this guy. This guy, to me, is one of the best players in the Premier League. He's dangerous. Okay, I'll give them that. He's a dangerous player. Defenders, <laughs> when they're up against him, they're like thinking, oh, my God, man, I've got... I'm marking Troy already. He had Robertson doing, you know. Man's got, he had, Ro <laughs> how many going. people you see got Robertson <laughs> on toast? Yeah. Robertson, brilliant defender. He had Robertson on toast. Don't He'll have anybody on toast. He's like that. I forget the name. There's one film. Um, is it one of them Avengers or one of those things, right? Uh -huh. Where there's, there's this character in it. You guys might know. You know him better than me. There's this character in there. That he, when he starts running and building up momentum, what's that character? He's like. You mean a Hulk? He's built out of stone or something. And he stone. starts running and he starts running and he builds up momentum and you can't stop him and he runs through walls and all that, right? That's Abdama Traore. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. And now he's added, he's added end product to it. He's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Um, what else is there? Ruben Diaz. So he goes, Ricardo Campanigo. Hi there. Uh, you, should, you should look at Ruben Diaz or Ferro from Benfica. Both young and amazing players. Oh, is it gone, actually? Oh, it disappeared. Yeah. But yeah, I we'll just continue I don't, I don't know enough about them. I'd have to take it. He was Nicholas last summer, actually. Um, Stefan Bramble says, back again. He says, what do you think of Luka Jovic as a replacement for Aubameyang? He appears to be surplus for requirements at Real Madrid. It was always, for me, a very strange signing when Madrid signed him, right? And I'm sorry, he doesn't even come anywhere near an Aubameyang, right? I, I, I'm sorry. Well, you, you. No, no, no. What well, are you considering? Luka Jovic of Aubameyang. No, no, no. I'm, listen, I'm going to do a drugs test. <laughs> I'm not saying Jovic is better than Aubameyang. We know he's not better than him. But if we lose to Aubameyang, I would go for Jovic. No, I wouldn't, man. Would What's you... with this cheat again? He's a good player. This is what I'm saying, man. You're again now on the little cheap team. All right, so who do you replace? Yeah, we lose to Aubameyang. Oh, there's a little cheap. Jovic is not really. Let's go for top grade. If okay. we lose a Bamiyang, I want someone on the same levels. Who, who's that? Then? Which it's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to be. It's, you're talking like 100 mil for the to replace somebody like a Bamiyang. That's yeah. why it makes sense to work and give him a very good contract. Unless if he definitely wants to leave himself, then there's nothing you can do about that. You cash in on him and you bring in. But Jovic <clears throat> doesn't excite me. He hasn't done anything. No, but he's a, um, if you watch him in last season, though, where Frankfurt, did he? Yeah, Frankfurt. He Frankfurt. Was born in Frankfurt. Yeah, that's what people say about that Sebastian Halle. Look at him last yeah, season. But, no, but you can't. At Frankfurt, he was killing it. What's he done at West Ham? Aubameyang and Dortmund. Huh? Remember Aubameyang in no, the Bundesliga? The Dortmund, Dortmund's a higher profile team, and um, Aubameyang was doing it in the in the in the um, Champions League. He was doing it in the league. They won the league. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Frankfurt. All I'm saying, right? Nah, let's not listen, write man. off Ludo Jovic. He's a good player. He's a good player, but that's not what. We won at Arsenal. A lot of people there saying Rabio, again, that'll be a decent sign in. He's not playing at um, Juventus, but he's not, is has he? he got the right temperament yeah. to come into that team? If he comes into that team and Arteta says, You're not in this week, will he throw his toys out the pram? Juggernaut, that was the name of the character. Thank you, guys. Juggernaut. Thank you. Oh, right, right. Juggernaut, you know that character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Juggernaut. Okay, and they said, if you can't, they said if he builds up any momentum, you can't stop him. Right. Brandon, Juggernaut. Brandon Eddie has come out and said, who's man named Bele to replace Aubameyang? Do you know what I'm... No. no, no, hang on. You have to listen to the argument here. Yeah, you're going to put him out wide and he's going to... No. Martin Eddie could be our striker. Yeah, you know, the next Pele. It's 18. The next Pele. It's 18. Don't put Pelé. too much... <laughs> We're putting too much pressure. He's a brilliant player, Martinelli. He's going to be one of the best players in Europe if he continues to do what he's doing now. But he's 18. Let's not put too much on his shoulders. Let's not rush him too much. Let's just let him take his time and grow. That's what exactly what Arteta said the other day. So, and Usman Dembele is a good player. He ain't done it, has it? I'd rather Dharma Traore. Ooh. I would rather a Dharma Traore right, than cool. Usman Dembele. How, how about we let go of Aubameyang? Obviously, 
Team of Werner's a good shot, by the way. Is, is, is Team of Werner's decent. From Cole Cole. Yeah. Um, um, but Cole Cole, that's a good shot. Thanks for the super chat. Um, Team of Werner is a good player, but I still think Aubameyang's better. I just think... Aubameyang's got a better goal Look, I'm not saying sell Aubameyang, but if he goes, if he goes, mm. then I would, you know... Team of Werner would be about 90 million plus. Actually, I think he's got release goals in his contract, I've heard. Is it? Yeah. So, I don't think he, it would be that expensive, and he's a good striker. He's a very good striker. Mm. And he's on the Champions League as well. Lots of people coming in with Juggernaut. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so someone asked me, who's a better youth? A Juggernaut, that's true. Juggernaut was played by Vinnie Jones. That's oh, yeah. true. Yeah, who's a better youth player? Martinelli or Greenwood? It's a debate on Twitter if you're not sure about yeah, this. Yeah, I know. I've Gary, seen the debate so that's going on. To me, at the moment, Martinelli. Martinelli. I mean, uh, and that's not even just uh, the Arsenal biased on it. I just think Martinelli does more. Right? Greenwood's very good finisher. Very good um, scores goals. Um... But Martellini scores goals, but he offers so much more than that. His pressing, his hard work, his skill. Yeah. His all-round game is absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, to me, definitely him. Uh, Rosters117 um, with a super chat, he says, Hakim Zayic has to be the top priority in the summer. Uh, Centre-back. Yes. Yeah, centre-back centre is Simple centre-back, definitely. Simple as. Centre-back, Pomacano. Would you take Konate or Pomacano? Do you know Konate huh? is? Konate. He's a good player, you know. And he's, yeah, he and he's is. He's a big uh, tank as yeah, well. Yeah, but I Six prefer. Five. I think Upamon Kano. If we've got Salabi, or Saliba, Salaba in there, I think Upamon Kano would complement him more. Yeah. Someone said Haaland to replace Aubameyang. Oh, I wish he's a top top. Mm. He's, that he's, uh, the Ishmael there suggesting uh, Cheng is under. Um, the Turkish player. Listen, um, he's a no, good player. He is. I've not seen him play enough. I, have, for Roma. I, I like him. I like him. Very good player. But again, look. I, I, and then what about this one here? Um, for a replacement for... Now here's a shout for a replacement for Ozil. Um, Ali Khan says, Hey, Robbie, thoughts on Coutinho? Uh, uh, who in could a be available. In a heartbeat. Could be available in the, you he, know. He's a top. Go in with, uh, what would you what do you reckon would you be able to... 80, 90 million? I think you'd get him cheaper. I think 70. Perfect replacement for Ozil. And we've got the agents... Let's not forget... And he scores goals. He was offered to Arsenal in the summer. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd would, be up for that. I'd be up for Coutinho. Because he can shoot from range as well. Let's yeah, yeah. But we haven't got no defender. We haven't got no uh, midfielder yeah, shoots from range. Gets the ball and I'm like, just you got only Xhaka that will have a pop from range. And uh, one in 20 yeah. will go in. <laughs> you know what I mean? What else is there? How about Samore from Lille? Going into chess. Samore from Lille. Um, there's been a lot of talk that he was going to be going this window. He's only 20. Um, I like the look of him. But I'd rather indeed he. Indeed, I think they're separate different players. Samara's more of a, like a box to box. Box to box player, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we've got Gwen Doozy who can do that, you know. So we're gonna do. We are literally gonna do a couple more now. Oh, we're really grateful for um, the all the the, the uh, chats that's been going on, the super chats. We're grateful for all the brilliant comments that have been coming in. Um, we're gonna do a couple more though, two more, because uh, we got some more filming to do. We've got to do the Bias Premier League show. We've got to do. Uh, Dano Jr. says, uh, Dembele is always injured. I'm a Barca fan and no other player ticks me off more than him. Trust me, you want nothing to do with him. There you go. He's going to FIFA though, isn't it? Dano Jr. is a <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> we ain't playing FIFA, we're playing the real thing. Right? And uh, uh, so people there, so, <laughs> El Nenny, El Nenny. Someone keeps shouting, shouting El Nenny, he's on loan again. Laturo um, Martinez, do you know any, anything about who? Martinez? Laturo Martinez, he plays for Inter. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, a good he's, a, he's a good player. He's a good player. But yeah, that's, again, you're talking about 70, 80 million Yeah, but he's quid. a big money signings. I'm not sure if he's... I still need to see more. I still need to see more from him. Is Icardi signed for? Icardi, I'm sure Icardi's on loan. Natural goal scorer. He would. Natural goal scorer. But he would, you yeah. know, cause a lot of issues, right. you know. He caused a lot of problems, <laughs> you know that. Go to the new fan, go, <laughs> come at us. You cause a lot of problems, man. You know him or real. Um, last one here, last one. It's a super chat from Marty. He says, what will happen, happen to El Nenny? He's still our defensive midfielder. <laughs> to me, what? in the summer, he's on loan. He's been at Fenerbahce. Summer, he has to go. Uh, you move him on. Apparently, Eastman, I want him. Take him because he this. It's all yours. Yeah. Move him on. <laughs> Move him on. Listen, thanks for uh, watching our live uh, transfer update. Of course, we started off by telling you guys that we've signed Cedric. Uh, that has been confirmed. Cedric and Pablo Mari. We're not sure if any other deals are going to happen between now and the end of the day. But if they do, we'll be keeping you updated here on AFTV. There are rumours about Emery Chan and lots of other little rumours like that floating around. I'm not sure if we will do anything else. 
but who knows? It's transfer deadline day, and if how a lot of clubs operate, if, if there's something that they get offered, and a lot of clubs will be getting offered things throughout the day, if, say, something came in that Arsenal were just like, hey, absolutely no way can we turn that down, they'd have to go for it. The guys are just saying to me, I've got to do this super chat. It's the last one. Uh, seven for Risha with a super chat. Thank you. He says, would it be reasonable to get a backup um, like Ossiman of uh, Lille, sell Lacazette and use that money to buy an attacking midfielder? Also, what do you think about, what do you think of Robbie Burton making the first team? Um, so the player like from Lille, Burton. player from Lille, first of all, he's had a good season at Lille, yep. but that's his first season, like, you know, so I'm not going to say mm. he's better than Bamiang already or replace him, so, mm. I mean, as a replacement, maybe, but he'd be expensive, so, yeah. um, Robbie Burton's a good keep, player as well. Keep a Bamiang, I don't want to sell Lacazette. Lacazette can find back his form before the end of the season, and if he does, I like Lacazette. Would you start and him at he's 10? Such a hot, yeah, I would. Ooh. Because what people sometimes fail to see is all the work that he does in holding the ball up and bringing other players into play. And yeah. I know he ain't been scoring, but I still think he's a very important player mm -hmm. in that Arsenal team. Um, sort of player, if he was out for a few weeks, you'd see. Yeah, yeah. So, but listen, thanks for watching the show. Um, and as I said, we're going to keep you updated throughout the day. We've got a bias um, Premier League show coming up as well, preview show, where we're going to preview um, the games coming up. But thanks for watching the show, and um, yeah, let's see if we, any more transfers will come in. But welcome to Arsenal, Cedric.